USBG Gardens and Grounds Supervisor Angela Weber Hetrick is a native to the Garden State and an alum of Delaware Valley University. With a background in ornamental horticulture and environmental design, she has over 15 years of general horticulture experience and has worked mm -hmm. in a variety of climates ranging from New Jersey to Florida. Before working at the U.S. Botanic Garden, Angela worked for other prestigious gardens across the country, such as George Washington's Mount Vernon, Norfolk Botanical Garden, Mary Selby Botanical Garden, and Longwood Gardens. When not working at the garden, Angela enjoys spending time with her daughter, baking, and traveling. And with that, I'm going to toss it to Angela for this awesome presentation. Take it away, Angela. Thank you, Libby. Um, welcome everyone uh, for joining us here today at the United States Botanic Garden in Washington, DC. Uh, very excited to have you all joining us virtually. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, so we're gonna talk about how to make the perfect fall container. Um, so the first thing I wanna get started with, so when you make a fall container, some of the things you wanna think about are, of course, plant selection. Um, and of course, Plant selection depends upon what the designer um, wants to, you know, what their preference is and kind of what they're drawn to. So my very first container here, um, I selected a large blue pot. Um, and then I have plants that I selected that I, would be compatible together when I'm creating this container. So, and of course, when you're making a container, you also want to think about the soil that's going to go in the container. So. Um, I just used, I will show you briefly. I use something that's just a regular potting mix. It could be found at any of your garden stores, um, you know, or your local garden center. So that is what I'm choosing to fill my blue pot with here. So you wanna, since this is a rather large pot, you wanna fill it up about halfway. And then you also wanna get the plants, kinda you wanna stage them first in your container before you uh, thoroughly plant them in. So it's always fun as the designer to kind of see how the plants are gonna all look together. And you may need to tweak them, you may need to reposition them. Um, so feel free to kind of do that as you're, as you're going along here. So now with a pot this size, you also wanna think about drainage. Make sure the pot you choose has plenty of drainage um, or a hole in the bottom. So if your pot, such as this does not have a uh, hole at the bottom, I recommend using a very large nursery pot, something like this that you could put inside the pot so the pot would not become uh, incredibly heavy or it also has the drainage that we're talking about in the bottom. So whichever you choose and just make sure you have the drainage uh, covered when you're creating the container. So. I've selected these four plants here. I've got a boxwood here. I have a dusty miller. I also have a juniper, and then I have a garden mum. Hey, Angela, could you sure. pull those? Could you um, hold those plants up to camera before you put them in the pot, just sure. so that people can see them? Can you yep. get a little bit closer? That would be great. Sure. Yep. So I've got this dusty miller here. This is going to go in alongside this boxwood. So if I need to, I'm gonna shift the soil around to get maximum coverage of the plants and getting them grouped together that looks um, artistically done here. So now when you're putting your plants together, make sure you also break up the roots just a little bit, just a little bit here, because that will make the roots want to grow a little bit more and the root ball not so compact. So, all right, so we've got two there together. So, and then you may have to, once the container is put together, you may have to continue to add soil to have the roots entirely covered. And then you wanna kinda just tuck them in. And I may need to play around with it to see how it all is coming together as you do it. So, um, sometimes it takes a little bit of work of kind of seeing how the container itself is coming together. So remember to continue to break up the roots a little bit. There we go. And then kind of how this all gonna be positioned. So, and in fact, with this, I need to add more soil because I wanna get a little bit of height 
for this particular one. So, uh, add more soil. So, once you feel like you have the right height and how you want the container to look, you add in your soil to backfill so nothing, the roots are not exposed. Angela, we had a question in the in the chat here. Is it is it possible to harm the roots when you break them up? This person's no. always worried about that. Generally, no, right. That is a big um, uh, fear that a lot of people are like, am I damaging the roots too much? As long as you're being pretty gentle, uh, you're not going to damage the roots. In fact, sometimes that'll, you know, that'll just stimulate more root growth. So, no. As long as, obviously, you're leaving the root ball mostly intact, it should be fine. Um, but, of course, you know, be gentle. Um, and then, so with this container here, it is almost done. But, of course, make sure you look at the aesthetics. Take a step back when you're done. Removing plant labels, plant tags, um, if it was purchased or if it was uh, homegrown. You want to make sure all those fine details are finished. Um, so now that you know the container has plenty of good drainage, you've got some texture, you've got color. In fact, all the hues in here with the whites, the blues, the silver, um, and a little bit of height. This is just one example of a nice fall container here. And the whites and the silvers really make the blue pot pop. Um, then finally what you would do, once it's everything's all in position and you have the pot or container placed where you want it to be at your home or wherever you're creating this, then of course, finally water the container. Water it really well. Now, since this is a mostly for sun, I would want to make sure that I'm watering this probably, you know, at least twice a week and checking on it. Now, but if it's also getting rained on, that's something else to consider with how much water the container itself is getting. Angela, yeah. why, why did you pick those four plants for that container? Like, as we go, why, why sure. did you pick the plants to go together? So, um, okay, so um, I wanted something that was going to kind of say fall, obviously, with the mum. Uh, I wanted something that was going to prolong into even maybe the winter season. Um, I just like the blue pot. In fact, I picked the blue pot first. <laughs> Um, and then I just kind of grouped items of things that I liked, um, you know, and, so, and it's just really, it's kind of designer's choice of why you're picking. And of course I wanted something full sun. Um, you know, you have to consider those things, you know, is this container going to go in the shade? Is it going to go in the full sun? Many times containers generally, you know, people put them on a front porch. There's lots of sun. So you want to consider all those factors when you're making your fall container. Um, but I also wanted something that, you know, if I left the boxwood and the juniper, it's hardy in this area. That way I could leave it out all season long and then into the winter, uh, going into the winter season, I could easily remove the dusty miller when that wasn't looking its fresh or best. And I could substitute in another little small evergreen or I could then in fact take, tuck this out, take this out, and I could start shoving in some fall bulbs um, that would come up next spring. So really, I could almost get three seasons out of this container if I plan it correctly. So I've got my uh, Dusty Miller, which is still looking really good, which many people grow them through the uh, yeah, summer, spring. Um, and then I've got my evergreens here, and then I have a fall mum. So I'm hoping this container could last me easily maybe into, you know, definitely through early winter. And then if I substitute the right things out, I can maybe get the spring season out of it as well. So that's kind of why I chose those, Libby. Are there any other questions about this container before I move on to the next? There, there was a question about drainage. Um, how do you establish drainage? Um, okay, years? sure. So um, this pot, so what I can show you on some of my other ones, many of them already have holes at the bottom. So that's uh, element number one. You want to make sure your container if you're using a nice ceramic glaze pot, you want to make sure there's a hole at the bottom. If your container does not have a hole, you can use a uh, pebble, gravel, you could use all sorts of things to build it up to make a layer where the water can actually seep down 
and that the plants themselves are not just sitting in, you know, muddy soil, because that will then eventually rot your whole container. All right, so we will and get then, started. Uh, as, you're, as you're getting started with that container, please keep, get started. If you could talk about how long you think the plants will last into the fall and winter as you're building this next, uh, oh, next container. Sure. All right, so I'm going to add in my soil here. So these containers do get rather heavy if you're using um, regular potting soil and the size of the container. Um, so be mindful if you need to use packing peanuts or peanut shells or something to make the container a little bit more manageable if you were going to have to move these pots and containers around quite a bit. So that's usually the challenge with um, and rather how, large containers. How would you move the pot if it's like really heavy and you needed to move it somewhere else? What suggestions would you have for that? <laughs> ask, ask a neighbor. <laughs> no, um, you know, there's dollies, there's um, different things, you know, there's um, different, you know, even pot, wheel, pots that have wheels on them or that sort of thing. So there's really all different types of um, strategies. Um, but I do recommend that if it's gonna be a rather large container, plant your container where it's going to be located at. That is probably the most um, safest on your back and your knees and everything. Um, that way you're not lifting something that becomes like, you know, maybe close to a hundred pounds, if, depending upon the size. So planting in place is something I really like to even do at home um, and many gardeners like to do. You plant the container in, in uh, have the container in its spot and then bring all your plants in your soil bags where you're going to be um, having this container so you're not having to move many move it many times and risk hurting yourself. So, all right, we've Great, got- thanks. Sure, okay. So I'm gonna be using this mum here, this chrysanthemum. And this is also hardy in this area. So I'm adding more soil. Sometimes you need to kind of figure out the size of the plants and then kind of estimate how the container's gonna look. So I'm also wanting to use an herb here just to add a little bit of scent and extra color. We've got some purple sage here. Because it's always fun sometimes, you just don't have to do ornamentals. You could always even add, incorporate um, herbs, vegetables in your container, whatever suits your fancy for, for the fall season. And I'm adding here a um, little, English daisy here. And then I'm going to add a few pan garden pansies here. Yeah, so, and then again, the pansies, why I like those um, specifically for this area, they could get us through the fall and even honestly through part of the winter. And then even then early spring. So just depending upon how they fare through the winter and what kind of winter we have, they can really, this whole container could probably get you into early spring minus the sage, um, which that would die back in our winter. So you could then easily dig that one out and bring that inside if you so choose to. And then I'm adding in another garden pansy here. So now I need to, with this container in particular, so I have some uh, roots exposed. So what I need to do is now fill up with some soil around the plants and their roots, because they want to make sure that they have good soil contact. So for watering purposes, everything will stay nice and moist how it should. And also to prolong these containers, it's really important to fertilize. A lot of times when we are making the container, we get so focused on the design element using the colors and textures and what kind of pot. Um, we want the plants to thrive and be, you know, and prolong them through uh, the entire season. So really, I'd like to use a time-release fertilizer, which will really help the plants and give them all the nutrients they need through the growing season. So that's really important to have done as well before you finish your container. And it's usually best to put that down and then water the container because as it's watered, it gets fed at the same time. Okay, so, so as I'm tucking the soil in here still, I'm just tucking the soil in. I've got my garden sage, I've got pansies, I've got the chrysanthemum. 
got a little bit of everything all tucked into this container. Okay. Were there any questions about this container uh, at all, Libby? Um, not necessarily specific to that container, but um, is there a way to prevent the ceramic pot from freezing and then breaking outside in the winter? Um, sometimes you need to look for um, containers that are considered frost-proof. Um, that might be more of a challenge to find, um, but they do make them. Um, glazed do better. Glazed or a ceramic do a lot better than, say, the terracotta, which tend to break and freeze pretty quickly. Um, so I would look for that if there's any kind of um, anything labeling like that from the manufacturer or if anyone at the garden store would happen to know. Um, but really, I guess the foolproof way of making sure your containers don't crack through the winter, bringing them inside into a garage or a sheltered protected area where they're not going to freeze and thaw, freeze and thaw. So that's really kind of the foolproof method. Um, it's unfortunately, it's a lot of work to bring the containers in and kind of move them back and forth. But um, if you really are concerned about your containers, that's probably the best way. Um, or even, you know, you could always put a tarp or some kind of burlap over them to kind of help withstand the elements so they're not, then, you know, filling with water, freezing, thawing, and then expanding and cracking the containers. So uh, I guess it depends upon how attached you are to the container. I would certainly recommend um, doing whatever you can to preserve it so it, it'll last you through the whole winter and then even into the next season. Um, so that would just be a quick tip. Right. Fantastic. Wow. Great. So we've got that container. All right. So we're going to move on to a, another container here. All right. So I've got a smaller container here. Well, roughly the same size, maybe. All right. So another size, another large green container. Um, so also another way to kind of help with the weight of containers and pots, you can take a pot and put it upside down in the container, kind of like so. If you put the pot in there, and then you start filling in with soil is a way to kind of help lessen the amount of soil you need to use, and it'll also lessen the weight of the pot. So as I fill up, um, Pot here, real quickly. All right, so now I've used probably at least maybe a quarter less soil, maybe a third. Um, and I still, my pot will be quite a bit, yeah, it's quite a bit lighter than some of the previous ones. So I'm going to use here my um, orange, my orange mum here. Okay. And then I also have an ornamental pepper here. So the mum would be hardy in this area. And then again, so would the garden pansy. However, the pepper, the first frost, it's not gonna, it's not gonna look, um, it's, not, it's not gonna look its best. Okay, so I've got a garden mum, I've got my ornamental pepper and then now I have the garden pansy here so what's fun about it's always I mean I just love designing and making containers and um, just adding that fall decor uh, to any area it's just it really you know fall is probably one of my favorite uh, time of year to really make containers because there's so many different things you can add to containers it just doesn't need to be the plants themselves you can add twigs or pine cones or other things that are kind of going to get you into the next season, and you can get multiple seasons out of them. In fact, um, today I brought here with us uh, a couple of little gourds to really dress up a pot. If you're seeing that there's some holes or like oh, it's a little too much soil, you know, think about some other things in nature that you could um, add to the elements of the container just to dress it up and to really um, you know, make the, uh, the, the container say, hey, it's fall, it's autumn. Um, so just kind of dressing it up simply like that, just adding, you know, your, um, your gourds, maybe a mum or two, maybe a little pumpkin, a mini pumpkin, 
Um, so that could be kind of something fun to add to the, just for adding some color and texture. If, if the plants aren't doing it enough, um, you know, different twigs or branches, just to make the pot a little more maybe whimsical looking, give it some artistry. And then, oh yes, and don't forget to tuck in your spring bulbs uh, underneath if you really wanna get this container, um, you know, prolong it through the next couple of seasons. So that's just something to kind of think about and add to. And once you have everything in place here, um, don't forget to add your time release fertilizer. Also, you want to add then your, and then you want to make sure you water the pot and make sure all the soil is thoroughly off. And then you have one of your finished um, containers here, which I will move off to the side. So Angela, while you're moving that beautiful container, you mentioned a okay. uh, time release fertilizer. We had a question yes. about that. This okay. person asked if you're putting woodies such as the boxwood and juniper in containers, mm -hmm. will you have time release fer fertilizer promote new growth that might get damaged in winter? No. So really it's, um, it, it'll be fine. It's such a slow release. It's not a very high strength at all. So really with time release fertilizers, it's just enough to kind of help the plants along. Um, and honestly, you know, once, um, then the plants would not go dormant, but they would be, um, you know, their growing would not prolong through the winter, but they would be in place. I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, burning the plant or anything like that, or really promoting um, too much new growth. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that at all, especially with the how, how um, the ratios within those um, time release fertilizers, it's so small. I wouldn't worry about that. Um, and if you're if you're using the method of lightening up your pot by having that sort of upside down pot inside okay. it, mm -hmm. uh, do you need to ensure the, that you plant around the edges just for the roots? Yes. So, okay, let me, I will go back to this one. So, absolutely. So in here, you want to make sure you've got plenty of soil. So really, the pot itself, the upside down pot, it's just basically right, raising everything. And if you can, you can take smaller pots if you're concerned that maybe the other plants on the edges are going to sink down, you could take some smaller pots just to raise the whole thing. Um, and then, but you really got to be um, careful on making sure you have, you know, um, you have enough water in the container um, because also these pots here, they're going to have holes and the water is going to drain through. So you really want to check then the soil moisture probably a couple times a week. Um, you might even have to check it daily if it's in a really sunny spot. So just to be mindful, if you're going to, you know, try any tricks like that, um, just to kind of lighten your pot and make it lighter. Um, just, yeah, make sure you're checking the soil. There's plenty of it in there and you're getting enough moisture to the plants and to the roots. So just a little trick of the trade to, you know, keep in the container looking fresh, but you might have to water it daily if it's in a really warm, sunny spot. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. We are going to, I'm going to try now the, um, this uh, purple container here, this uh, container with these um, up here. Okay. So I've got a garden aster here. It's hardy. Um, so we've got some other things. All right. So with this size pot, I'm just using a regular standard nursery pot. Again, this has plenty of drainage. Um, and then really to prolong some of these containers, like this um, aster in particular, after I'm done with this container, if I didn't want to use it through the winter season, I could easily plant this in the ground and then I could have it for next season. So that is another way to kind of prolong some of your containers, feeling like you're getting the maximum life out of the plant and into the next growing season. So um, that's also a great way to take some of these perennial items, whether you're using mums or asters, you know, plant them in the ground at home. Then you could really, next spring, you'll start to see everything come back. Yes, it would be a lot more work to dig them out of the ground and put them back in containers, but it's a great way to kind of be sustainable and um, keeping it um, uh, the container inexpensive. So there's lots of different ways to go about making your containers. Um, and share plants with your friends. Make divisions. Um, those are some ways to keep some of them, uh, keep the container inexpensive. It doesn't have to always be in something so large or um, expensive. It can be, you know, 
you can do a container in something as simple as a little tiny um, pot if you, depending upon how much space you have at home, whether you're just putting it on a little patio, a little balcony. Um, sometimes space is an issue if you don't have a large area at home. So there's lots of different ways to go about, you know, having containers at home or um, making them. So really anybody can kind of get into it. Angela? Um, yeah. Um, when you want to... Um... When would you plant that aster? At the end of the fall or next spring? Like when, yes. when would you do that? So um, what I would do is once the container is done and I've had my fill of it, so at the end of the season, if just say, you know, it was mid-October and this was totally done and it was bloomed out and I was just like, okay, the plant itself looked tired, I would take it out of my container and I would then put it in, plant it in the garden and I would kind of let it go dormant and do its thing through the winter and then kind of, you know, by maybe... Um, so it would grow all through the spring and then into through the summer. And then maybe what I would do end of August, early September, dig it out and get it kind of set in the container or the pot I would want to put it in for the fall again. Um, and that's a great way, I feel like, to get many uses out of a, a single plant. So it is a little bit more work, but it certainly, um, you'll get many uses out of a single plant. And Angela, as you're as you're working with that container, that aster looked like it was pretty root bound. Do you ever cut the roots apart or just you pull can. them apart? Um, yeah, you can. Uh, so it's actually not too bad. Um, so I can gently kind of take some of the roots apart at the bottom. Um, you know, I don't want to do too much damage, but I think this will be just fine. Kind of getting the roots apart, getting it settled into its new container. And that's the thing with a lot of um, plants you either may purchase or dig out, it could, they could be very root bound. Um, so you want to make sure sometimes getting the pot, the plant out of the pot is the biggest challenge. So it's really important when you're, you know, getting something out of its container, out of its pot to be gentle. Sometimes you have to squeeze the pot or kind of use a little bit of force. Um, if it really comes down to it, you could always uh, take some scissors or pruners or whatever works for you. Just make sure you don't damage your pruners or scissors in the uh, process, but you can always cut the pot off the plant if it's just getting to be a little too root bound and you can't um, just maneuver it out with uh, strength. You can always cut the pot off. So, all right, that one's set. So I'm also, for this container, I'm gonna use uh, an ornamental pepper here. So I'm gonna, now some of these, the root balls are pretty, um, uh, pretty delicate, so they don't need much, um, you know, um, I don't need to rip apart the roots that too much or uh, break them up. So some of these can be pretty delicate, so I don't need to do too much of that. I have another English daisy here. All right, so, in fact, I'm probably going to have to add more soil to this container. I have okay. another and little so when you're done working with that container, if you could turn it to camera too, so we could see the other side as well, that would oh, be sure. awesome. Yeah. Okay. We're just breaking up the roots here a little bit. Okay, and then this one again, uh, this hardy aster can easily go into the garden um, after the growing season when you feel like you're tired of the mum or the container. So sometimes you just have to keep adding more soil as you're planting. Um, you may have to shift the plants around as you plant. Really, you want to tuck the soil down in there. So you make sure that the plants, the roots are covered. You want to make sure plenty of soil in there. There's good contact. Angela, it looks like you have a lot of uh, plants in that container. Uh, how do you make sure you're not overcrowding it? Well, um, so really, so a lot of times people do their containers as just an annual, kind of an annual feature. Um, so really, believe it or not, uh, the plants can really be packed in there. Um, it just really depends on how full and lush you want your container to look. If you're really concerned about the plant getting just larger, then of course you would probably want to use less. So I personally like to have my containers looking nice and full and lush. Um, they look nice and finished. Um, they also, I feel like, you know, they'll just give a nice presentation. Um, so really, I mean, you could put, if I wanted to, if I was really just concerned about plant growth and having it just get to be larger, I would probably only put maybe just this one aster in the um, container. So um, it just really depends on the look you're going for. 
and kind of what the end goal is. Is it really a container for display? Is it a container to uh, get, you know, um, you just want to grow one single mom? Um, and really kind of what, what you want to do with it. Um, maybe it's a gift for somebody that you want to bring as a nice um, hostess gift or um, birthday gift or something. So really it just kind of depends on what you're looking to do. And then, of course, you can always take plants out if it looks too overcrowded or if you think everything is just too jammed in, it is okay to, you're not gonna, you're not gonna ruin the plant. You can always take something out and then you can always take it out and pop it back in to a, one of the containers, hopefully that you've saved. So, so it is fine to keep rearranging the container and just kind of seeing how it all comes together. Um, certainly it doesn't always magically come together uh, <laughs> the first try. Sometimes you need to kind of rearrange and tweak and kind of and play around with it too, um, and take a step back and look at, um, you know, the container creation here. So, of course, I need to add a little bit more soil. My one side seems a little empty on soil. So, all right. So, now this is the finished product, and this is kind of what I was looking to have, something that's going to, like, look very full, lush, um, and that'll get me through the fall, and then if I need to, what I can do uh, for an early winter, I can remove the pepper, the asters, and then I can, and of course the English daisy, and I can leave the pansies and I can substitute with some winter um, evergreens or even some sticks um, and just some other things that can really, you know, get me through maybe winter. And then think about finally what I would want for, this, uh, for the spring. So these are just a few ideas of how you can take this container and prolong it to the next uh, the next coming season or two. Okay, I'm gonna put this one back over here. So while you're moving those around, okay. um, so the one, the container, the last container that you're gonna be doing in the back there, I know you're gonna take these off before you bring it forward, but there's some little gourds, little pumpkins in there. Yes. So yeah, yeah. Um, if you put those, if you're being festive and you put those in your, your container, will the gourds rot in the dirt over time or? Um, generally gourds, you know, they can stay a really long time as long as they're cool and dry. Um, and if you don't keep your soil super mushy, I would say definitely you want your containers to dry out in between watering. So. Really, if they're outside, it's cool, it's dry, um, they should be fine. If they're just kind of laying there on the soil, um, it's more for artistry and just for a little bit of interest. But no, I think they should be fine. Um, but of course, if they were like anything over time, it would rot. If it sat there all winter long and, you know, it was wet and damp, yes, over time they would eventually rot. But um, I think in the just short season of the fall, I think it would be totally fine and it just gives a nice, uh, yeah, just a nice little extra, um, you know, accessory to the container just to dress it up. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, so my final container here. So this one, uh, again, a rather large container. Um, and I am adding, so, and I also have some little accessories, uh, my mini pumpkins, which are always fun to add in any container. Um, so of course, in this container, I'm using the ornamental peppers. I'm using a garden pansy. I'm using this um, fall mum chrysanthemum. And then I have this um, blue rug juniper here, which is gonna be nice. It'll cascade for me. And then it'll also, uh, get me through into the winter time. So that way, if I want to use this container and just kind of dress it up for the winter season, um, it'll be kind of well on its way and just, I can remove some of the other elements of this container and um, it'll be all set for the winter season. Of course, remember to use your clippers uh, if you're having issues getting off your plant tag or other little things, or if you need to do a little touch up pruning. Um, that is a great way to make sure you have your tools on hand and all your supplies before you start a project. All right, so what I'm going to do here is get my, get my container. Now, this root ball does not need to be broken up at all because it is already, depending upon your plants and um, 
you know, how root bound or um, loose the root ball is. You may not need to um, break up the uh, root ball at all. So I'm going to add a bunch more soil. So, Angela, I noticed in this pot you're using those ornamental peppers. Yes. Um, are there any other sort of fruit and veggie type plants you would recommend for the fall and winter season? Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, so, yeah, ornamental peppers are a lot of everyone's go-to. Um, you know, feel free. And, um, I mean, sometimes eggplant could be really fun if you found some eggplant, if they still had the fruit on it. Um, you know, with the purples and the whites and different colors. I mean, that could be a lot of fun to add those in for seasonal color. Um, trying to think of some other veggies that could easily be uh, incorporated. Um, I also really love using herbs in the containers as well. So whether you had some basil or some parsley or some cilantro or just some things to get a little bit of extra life from your uh, herbs you were maybe growing through the um, summer, Rosemary, I love it for its color and texture. That would actually, rosemary would have been fantastic in this container if I had some of that back there or even some lavender. Um, so just depending upon the container and what else is available at the time that you're shopping for plants or the container. So certainly, um, I, I really like using herbs as well. They kind of really complement some ornamentals. Okay. Angela, can you remind me, are you just using Potting soil, is it like a mix of potting soil and compost? What is no, the- No, I'm just using a straight uh, straight potting mix. Yep, so I didn't go with anything super complicated or fancy. I just, uh, a couple of bags from the garden store and uh, yep, just straight potting mix. So nothing, uh, and you wanna be careful not to use um, anything that is uh, like too heavy, like a clay soil. If you were trying to like, hey, let me dig some soil out of my yard or something, you wanna be careful with that, you know, depending upon the soil, you want to have the right amount of drainage. That's why, you know, potting soil has the right um, drainage. It has the right aeration for the plants when you're just putting things in a container. Because um, depending upon where you live, you know, soils can change. They could be so drastically different from complete sand to, um, you know, a silt loam to then a, um, a very clay. So really, drainage is really, really important in a uh, container as you don't want your plants to rot and you also um, you want to make sure they just get the, all the nutrients they need. All right. So now this plant here, this mum here, this obviously needs the roots broken up a little bit as I'm showing you how to do so. How do you know when the roots need to be broken up? Oh, um, <laughs> so usually you could just tell, you could see how all these roots are almost like so compact. A lot of times they take on the shape of the container they were in. Uh, you can see that it's just almost very hard. Um, and sometimes what you need to do is then where somebody had asked earlier about just, you know, you may need to cut the very bottoms just, just gently, um, just to break it up slice, uh, slightly here. So if you were to kind of do that, you're not going to hurt the roots, but I mean, sometimes like it is so root bound, you can't even break the roots up at all. Sometimes you need to use pruners. You might even need to use a soil knife and just kind of gently slice the plant's roots just to just so it can break out of that shape that it was in originally. Um, okay. Oh, and I do have my, so I still have my garden mum here. Pack it in there. Make sure I've got plenty of soil coverage. Okay. And I've got the, uh, the garden pansy here, which this really doesn't need to be broken up too much at all. It's got, the roots are pretty, pretty small still. Right, so I've got that in there. Now I'm going to add more soil. Okay, so I'm adding more soil. And then of course, remember you would wanna add your time release fertilizer or feel free and use just, you know, um, make up a watering can with some uh, liquid feed um, fertilizer. There's many different methods um, to fertilizing your plants but that will certainly prolong them through the season. And then of course, watering is the big one. So if you go away if on vacation or if you're away for the holidays, it's important to keep plants watered because um, they will certainly not thrive while you're away if no one's taking care of them. Um, so a lot of different things to consider, um, but it can be a very easy activity and great way to dress up any home, garden, house, um, 
and backyard, patio, deck, balcony. So, all right. So, so uh, Angela, the plants that you're using, are these mostly like sun loving plants? Uh, could yes. they work well in the shade or if they couldn't, um, what are some good shade plants maybe? So, okay, let me think about, uh, so yes, I chose mostly sun today um, as many of the ones that I was shopping for were in the sun section. Uh, so I ordered, got some pansies, the mums, the peppers. So these will all do very well in the sun. Um, if I was to use shade items, I might pick some cupra. I might, um, I'm trying to think of some other, maybe some hostas. Um, I'm thinking of more perennial type. Um, Cause really a lot of your one season plants, your annuals are most of the time, they're mostly um, sun loving. So. Um, so really, you know, with anything that's going to have a lot of blooms, a lot of flowers, generally, um, I would say is, you know, for the sun. Um, but not to say you couldn't do a lot of foliage things um, that could go in the shade, too. Um, you know, you could really kind of get creative and use some even uh, tropicals, um, like a Sansevieria you could put into a pot, which, you know, would do fine in low light levels. And then um, just remember, if you're going to choose tropicals to put into an outdoor container, to really um, change it up, just remember, come with, come generally 55 and below, the plants are not going to be happy. So you would have to bring those in. So, um, and really, so you can use lots of different things, um, but I generally choose more sun because that's sort of, you know, what's, I feel like you have the most variety, the most uh, options uh, when shopping, and, um, and that's what I generally I have in my home, so. Wonderful. Well, Angela, we're just about at time as you're finishing up that okay. container. Uh, okay. But as you're finishing it, we can ask one more question. And I feel okay. like we get this question a lot. And it's about pests and things like squirrels. How do you keep them out of your containers? Do you just like, oh, pile a bunch of rocks on top of them? Or what, what do you do? <laughs> um, that is a really hard one. There's no perfect remedy. Sometimes there's all sorts of... Um, sometimes different scents and different things deter pests and animals, whether it's a groundhog, a squirrel, or, um, you know, sometimes like I've heard like garlic or um, j just different scents. I'd have to research exactly uh, which scents are kind of deter the animals and the pests and the pesky critters. Um, yeah, that is definitely a hard one. Sometimes even with deer, there's uh, no remedy as if they really like what you have, they're, they're gonna eat it. Um, but squirrels, um, yeah, uh, no, no, uh, no uh, perfect solution. So, all right. And then just one other touch I wanted to add to this container or one or two, um, feel free and add some uh, little mini pumpkins that really dresses the container up. So I think now this one is sort of, I think it's finished. Um, I think it has everything it needs. I've got the finished the soil and I've got my pansies, my little evergreen there, my juniper, my ornamental peppers, and then I finished off. And then of course, if you really wanted to have one last finishing touch, you could always create a florist bow or you could buy one. Um, and you could always tuck that in at the, um, at the end if it was gonna be a gift or something for somebody or if it was gonna be, um, or just even for yourself and just to really dress it up at home uh, to really add that extra fall flare to, you know, the decor and the, the container. Um, so those are just a few other things about how to really make a, uh, a beautiful fall container um, and just all the different elements that go into it, the color, the texture, um, and just proper location and the kind of container you want to use. And of course, remembering to keep it watered. So there's lots of different things that go into making a fall container or really any container for any season. Um, and also about plant selection and always uh, reach out to a plant uh, person or a plant expert if you have questions. It's always a great way to get some uh, advice or at your local garden shop. So people are always happy to help. Well, thank you so much, Angela. This has been amazing. Um, what a fantastic, fantastic presentation. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone who joined us today.